Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I would like to explain to you how you can grant yourself admin access to the sites you did not create. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. So as your users create sites through SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, Outlook, uh, Groups, uh, you, I'm sure you end up with lots and lots of sites. Uh, there are many different ways um, to create them. Uh, and again, you know, you can create them through uh, new sites, through Teams, through uh, uh, SharePoint, through Outlook. Let me just show you one of the places where your users can create a site from. So uh, here we go. If uh, somebody comes in, if your users come in here to the screen and they can create a team site, which is, of course, part of the Office 365 group, they can create a communication site. Uh, so, and there are, of course, many other places where they can do it from. So the bottom line is you end up with all of these different sites uh, in your SharePoint Admin Center. And I hear this question quite often. Well, Greg, you know, we we have so many sites and I'm a SharePoint admin. I'm a global Office 365 admin. I cannot even access them. Uh, let me explain to you what's happening here. So the way it works in SharePoint, the way it works in SharePoint is that whoever creates the site automatically becomes an admin of the site. So obviously, if you create a bunch of site, um, you know, being a SharePoint admin, you automatically, of course, have access and have administrative access to your uh, to the sites you created. If your users do the same, if your users create a site, um, then they automatically become an admin of the sites as well. And even though you are a global Office 365 admin, even though you are a SharePoint admin and have access to this admin uh, you know, portal over here, it does not automatically uh, um, allow you into those sites. You can grant yourself access, but it doesn't happen automatically. Case in point. So, of course, in my environment, I created majority of the sites myself. Uh, but Mary, if you notice, created a few sites. Uh, and, you know, Mary created a communication site and a team site. And if I try to access those sites, you know, here we go. I'm trying to access my... Uh, uh, communicate her communication site can do it get access denied same thing with team site uh, can do it of course Mary can uh, because she created those uh, she automatically becomes uh, an admin of the site uh, now because obviously we have access to the SharePoint admin uh, portal we have access to uh, uh, to this page to the screen if you will uh, we can uh, allow ourselves into any site. We can pretty much grant uh, access um, uh, to ourselves to any site. Uh, here is how we can do it. So it's pretty simple. You just click on the checkbox next to the site uh, you want to become an admin of. Uh, and over here under permissions, manage admins, right? Manage admins. And of course, you uh, spell out your name. If you notice, Mary is already an admin. Uh, just because uh, she created the site. Uh, and I'm going to, of course, add my name in here. So, and as soon as I do that, um, let uh, it, the site has been updated. So let's double check. And of course, now I can access the site. Um, same thing with uh, the team site. However, with the team site, uh, if I click over here, kind of repeat the same thing. On the permissions, you will notice two options. Uh, again, you will notice manage uh, ad additional admins option like we had before, and you will also notice manage group owners. Uh, what does this mean? Well, remember, this is a team site. This is a site that is part of an Office 365 group. So if I choose this bottom option, then I will pretty much uh, just add myself to the SharePoint site only. All right, so I will be able to access the SharePoint uh, side of things, if you will. However, if I choose this option right here, uh, this will make me a group owner, just like Mary. A group owner, of course, uh, right, is the individual who has access to everything, is the owner of the whole group, uh, not just a SharePoint site, uh, Outlook, um, yeah, yeah, Outlook, uh, uh, group uh, for that uh, for that uh, for that uh, team uh, planner. Microsoft Teams, et cetera, all right? So if I just want to become an admin of just SharePoint site, I would choose the other option. If I want to become a group owner, just like Mary, so I have access to the site and all the other 
um, you know, parts of the Office 365 group, like Teams and Planner and Outlook. And if I want to check on those, you know, messages and Teams and et cetera, et cetera, then of course I will need to become a group owner. All right. Um, so that's pretty much the difference. Obviously, the group owner is kind of the highest level, right? It just gives you kind of uh, the SharePoint admin access plus admin access to everything else as part of the group. Uh, in this case, I'm going to just uh, allow myself into uh, the site again. And here we go. And again, uh, it doesn't take long to update it. And uh, if I click on the site now, of course, I am I can see the site. Very important, if you notice, right? Uh, it did not me add me as a member, right? Because I did not uh, make myself a group owner. So uh, under membership, um, you know, Mary is the only individual who, uh, you know, who is the member the, at the moment, and I'm not an additional member uh, because I added myself strictly to the site, to the SharePoint site, directly to the SharePoint site uh, as an admin. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you today. So hopefully you learned something new as always. Uh, happy to see you again on my blog, SharePointMaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.